love space. Love Scott Pilgrim. <coughs> I'm making the frame. Bum 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 bum. That's the music you want, right? The news music? <laughs> no, not like that. Bum 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 So Baby Driver is Edgar Wright's fifth full-length feature film, starring Lily James, Hansel Igor, John Hamm, and Jamie Foxx, and the legendary man himself, Kevin Spacey. Indeed. Now, how does this movie uh, add up to his other previous films? Let's find out. David, give us the lowdown, the real deal on Baby Driver. Well, Baby Driver is the fifth directorial effort from prestigious UK director Edgar Wright. He also made Spaced. If you've seen that, it's a phenomenal little series. Spaced. Love Space, uh, Edgar Wright, Nick Frost, um, of course, it's also got, you know, his entire earlier cast. It, it's really a lot of fun. But Baby Driver here, uh, it's really a completely different effort than some of his earlier works. Besides maybe one particular smaller role that a lot of people don't know about, and that's actually a music video for Mint Royale. The song is called Blue Song. And it, that's very important here because it's actually the basis for this entire movie. It's actually something of an extrapolation, a sonic experiment, if you will. He wanted to make a movie that was really timed to the music, to have an entire soundtrack that was very integral to the plot here. And uh, that's exactly what this movie delivers on, a, a very interesting gimmick that actually uh, transcends that entire title entirely. I feel like it's just so important and so prominent in every uh, aspect from the characters all the way up to the story. It, it's just a master class uh, to really look at and respond to. Well said. That was really good. Review over. <laughs> Baby Driver was pretty much awesome. The uh, editing, just like all of Edgar Wright's movies, is top-notch as usual. You have all these awesome quick cuts in the way that all the shots you know, match up with the music. It's just, it works so nicely, as perfect as you could want. Right. Car chases are pretty, pretty downright awesome too. Like, you know, real car drivers getting in there, moving their shit around, it's, it's pretty sweet. I would say that maybe a little too many cuts in those car chases. I could have done some longer sweeping takes, but for what we got, it was pretty fucking sick. I think, unlike his previous films, maybe, the plot isn't as deep as I wanted to go. Like, there's not as many layers to cut. Like, there are layers, but compared to something like Hot Fuzz, we can talk about that movie for years and still find, you know, something new about it. In this movie, I feel like it's maybe a little more simplistic. Maybe because of more efforts were put on, you know, syncing the entire damn music to a soundtrack. True enough. Yeah. I mean, just... If you like Edgar Wright, you'll like this movie for sure. It definitely feels like his most Hollywood effort to date. The last movie that he made was The World's End, and that was the movie that felt actually extremely British, to an extent that I don't think I've seen since his uh, directorial efforts in space. Hot Fuzz is British as hell. I don't, I don't know, man. I think there's a case to be made on the British pub scene from the world's the end crawl, and the yeah. absolutely ridiculous music that plays throughout the very bombastic score that accompanies it. I I don't know. It just has something that bleeds UK everywhere. It was pretty over. British. I'll give you that. Yeah. But but this one is the completely opposite direction. For anybody that knows Edgar Wright, you might know that he's been working on the Ant-Man movie for a very long time. That was his baby, and unfortunately Marvel just could not get along with him. But it makes sense. He's a very animated director with a will of his own, just sheer force of will, really, when it comes to what needs to be done, every aspect of the filming. And so him butting heads with Marvel is not really that big of a deal, not a surprise, really. So he actually went away from that and started working on this. Uh, he says he's been trying to get this made for a really long time. And so now we have it here, and it's just as good as you could possibly imagine it being. It's pretty solid. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to uh, Kevin Spacey. I mean, guy can, you know, he can sit there and squawk and draw a map at the same time. It's incredible. He's fucking impressive. He's fucking impressive. Some immaculate ships. Absolutely. What about the other cast? Like, I think the cast in general was all pretty solid. Yeah. Some of the side characters, like, you know, Jamie Foxx plays the thug guy real well. He's really intimidating throughout the movie. Bats. Um, Bats, that was his name. He had a stupid bat tattoo. Uh, you had John Hamm and his girlfriend. I don't know her name. Uh, they were a couple, you know, who were, like, did heists together and... 
I thought John Hamm's character in particular was nice and menacing. There was definitely some depth and you know, kind of evolution of his character oh, yeah. during the short time frame of the movie. Um, you have the girl, you know, the love interest Lily James, who I think she was Cinderella. You told me. Yeah, already. she played Cinderella. Yeah, she, she's recently. cute. She's cute, and you definitely get behind that romance. Uh, Hansel Igor. That's his name. El Gort. That's, that's his name. El Gort. Hansel Igor. That's his name. El Gort. It's El Gort. I mean, his acting's up to his name, you know, El Gort. <laughs> well, uh, Hansel El Gort was, he was alright. Like, I feel like the script didn't really require that much out of him, and he did a fine job. He's just kind of the quiet guy who listens to music all the time. Yeah. He acts goofy as hell at points and can, you know, pull out dance moves and stuff pretty well. So I can't really complain about that. Yeah, his acting um, is definitely adequate. I mean, oh, yeah. the only other thing I know him from is the Divergent series, and I don't really know him because I wouldn't watch. I've those never movies. watched those movies. Okay. I don't know anything about Hansel Logan. I don't fucking care. No. No. Um, who we're missing? I know uh, the Punisher was in. John uh, John Barenthal was in it. Oh yeah. But he wasn't in much. Like I thought he'd be in more of it from the trailers and stuff. And he has like one of the top billings on the movie, but he's in it like five minutes. Yeah, he has a really and, scant runtime. I mean, there was a time where I would have hated to see Shane from Walking Dead in a movie. I would have cringed and been like, no, not for me. But he really proven himself as an actor. He was in Wolf of Wall Street. You know, he was the Punisher, and I loved him as the Punisher. He was great. And he was even pretty good in this movie too. He just played like kind of a douchebag. You know, yeah. I wanted more of his douchiness in this. You know? Yeah. Like, but I guess you can only have so many assholes in a room together before it gets kind of old. Oh yeah, definitely. So overall, a, a really great cast. I, I'd almost say that uh, the the surrounding cast is a little bit better than what's going on with the main characters, especially uh, Lily James and Ansel Elgort. But overall, it's it's really animated. All the characters are, are very interesting in that they're a little too one note, but they're also just quirky and you know typically Edgar Wrightian. So, a lot going on there, a lot going on with the uh, score. I thought the score was, was actually pretty good. excellent. The man has had years to choose a soundtrack. You exactly. Know, so he's going to pick some gold ones. The soundtrack, it, of course, plays the most prominent role throughout the entire movie, more so than any particular actor or character. Really, it's, it's quintessential here. It is the most essential element to the movie, and in that aspect, it really kicks ass. Everything is choreographed to the cinematic orchestral elements. And when, you know, there's gunfire going on, and it's just keeping the drum beat, or you've got characters punching and fighting uh, to different variations on the, the scenes, uh, it's just excellent. It was definitely a fun movie. And, yeah, the music did help amplify the action scenes, how gunshots would be timed to the music yeah. and everything. It was cool. It really got you into the mood of the movie. It really did. Um, even though the action scenes were pretty good, I felt the movie what, did kind of drag on at times. Uh, yeah. It, it did really took, you know, it needed some steam built up to get to it. Like, I thought there'd be a lot more car chases in the movie. There's like yeah. two, maybe three car chases in the whole movie. That's true. And I thought there'd be a lot more. But a lot of it's actually a lot of the plot, you know, time is spent, you know, getting to know our baby driver, like his life, where he lives, the girl he's falling in love with. And, you know, the heist really, the heist stuff really plays a role more in the beginning and, like, the end. There's like a middle part that really just kind of focuses on our main hero. He's not that interesting. No. Like, I don't know, you could have really cut down on it maybe or like done something a little more creative to try to just kind of keep the movie going yeah because besides that part like everything else was hopping and bumping like Edgar Wright style should be yeah that's that yeah that is that is actually a very good point the middle section does drag and like we were talking about earlier it is the least Edgar Wrightian film in his entire discography the most Hollywood so that middle portion drags out especially considering that like maybe with some more interesting camera work or with more going on, just something more elaborate, maybe it wouldn't have had that issue. Uh, because I, I definitely know that he can pull off full drama. It just didn't work for me. I wanted to say, you said it's his most Hollywood movie. I don't think it's his most Hollywood movie. I think it's his most American movie. It still has the Edgar Wright style. Like, I don't see a big Hollywood production company want to make a movie like this, you know? Like, because he, this didn't get like the massive American backing of like a studio, you know? Yeah. It's still relatively low budget, and Edgar Wright had to work really hard to make it. But, I definitely, I still think it feels like, but he feel like he just toned down himself a bit for yeah. this movie. He's more subtle, Edgar Wright, and it was more like most of his movies are very British. You know, like they are filmed usually in the UK. They have UK, British actors. For um, this movie, it's all American. You know, yeah. it takes place in America. It was probably shot in America. American cast, and I just feel well, like John Hamm is British. But... John Hamm's great. Whatever he can be whatever he wants. But regardless, most of the cast is American. I don't feel like it's very Hollywood. I just feel like it definitely feels more. In a sense, different than his other movies. It does feel more American, more... I don't know what quite the word is. Yeah. But does it feel like he sold out? And when I, you say, I wouldn't you, say that. Yeah. I, I, feel like, I feel like when you say he, it feels Hollywood, it feels like he sold out. I want to make that distinction. Yeah, I, I do want to clarify that. I don't feel that, that Edgar Wright is putting, like, 
like Budweiser commercials <laughs> inside of his fucking Gee. movies. Mark Wahlberg just right. downing them all on camera as we get intense zoom in. The man spent years making this movie, you know, picking out that perfect soundtrack. He's not right. going to sell out, you know, he's in a. Right. And the concept really takes all. That big gimmick for the movie, it's more important than the plot and the characters or anything else. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's one of the biggest flaws of the movie is that when it comes down to it, it's, it's all about that interesting concept uh, behind the movie. And sometimes that can drag down certain aspects of it to some degrees. Right. Feels like a movie you just have to watch. You know, you watch it the first time, you absorb what it is. And it becomes more enjoyable upon a rewatch. Oh yeah, like everything. He's like done. all his movies. Yeah. Like, most movies are pretty much the same way. So, David, give us the real deal on Baby Driver. What did um, you think of it? I, I thought it was an excellent film, although it does have its issues, particularly that middling midsection, some little qualms here and there. But I'm nitpicking. I don't need to complain about a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. I think personally, I give it a B plus. B plus. All right. Um, this is a hard one. Because like I said earlier, it's a movie you, I feel like you have to watch more than once yeah. to really get a good gauge on. I've only seen this movie once, so I can only give you my first viewing rating. And it's likely to, more likely going to go up upon rewatch. It could go down, though. You never know. It could go Who down knows? a little bit. I doubt it'd go down much farther, though, than this. But I'd say I'd give it an A-. minus. I feel like it definitely has potential of longevity to it. Like, oh, definitely. It's definitely a movie you kind of just sit back and get lost in for, like, it's like two hours long, you know. So it's, it's not like a light ride. But you enjoy your whole time there, and it, it does kind of meander at times, but you know, when it picks up and gets good, it's worth it. And it, everything about it is just so well made that it's hard to complain about anything, especially Kevin Spacey. It's oh, yeah. Impressive. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd give it an A minus, or yeah, A minus. It's a good score. It could go up to an A, but probably not an A. We shall see in the future. But I guess upon some rewatches, we'll see. But I mean, I think compared to his very short filmography, all five movies, this might be the bottom one. But that's not saying much. That's not saying much of anything. They're all, all excellent movies. Are, they're all classics. All they're all ten out of tens. You know, you have the yeah. Bernetto trilogy. It's all ten out of ten. I love Scott Pilgrim. It's nine, out, like, you know, ten out of ten. And this movie is like right under it. It's, it's right on the cusp, but it's still absolutely excellent and well worth watching one of the best films of the year. So. Baby Driver. Baby Driver. See it. Driver of Babies. Yeah. Yeah. Baby Grinder. Driver and Grinders. <laughs> Alright. I don't even know where to go from there, dude. That's pretty good. Ramble on, yeah, with all that stuff. So, I don't know. Got what am I going to fucking talk about? <laughs> Pause for a minute, because there's there's a guy who uh, there's a guy who did uh, soundtracks, and he did he did a soundtrack like analysis of all of uh, Edgar Wright's movies yeah. uh, all throughout the years, and he picked out every single fucking song on every single one just just to like show how it set the mood. Okay. I'm trying to think of who it is because I want to shout him out. Shout out to this guy. Kind of a segue.